And uh, today's subject is around stakeholder engagement, advanced stakeholder engagement. So the assumption is that uh, you already have done um, what usually is considered good practice for stakeholder engagement. And we are uh, basing this off of an, um, an experience where you have a stakeholder who is not really uh, getting along, um, on getting on board and aligning with what we want to achieve in the organization. So if we have a, um, an initiative or a, a product or even a whole portfolio or a new change initiative, and there are uh, certain participants uh, in the stakeholder landscape, senior ones, who are um, in some shape or form not necessarily with uh, malintent, but um, their practices don't really support what we're doing. And we are here to work out how to overcome that. It's a very tricky situation, of course, and um, it is helpful if you have any sort of uh, professional coaching uh, um, education. However, I am going to give you the basics that you need in order to do this yourself. We are going to need a few um, different supporting models so that you can not only consider um, but also navigate your particular situation. So I'm going to draw a few things up. I'm going to remind you of a few models that you may already know. And we are going to work out uh, step by step how we're approaching this. Uh, so this is pretty much the strategy that um, it's evolved over the years, but this is the strategy that I have uh, used time and time again in order to um, get into the um, well, get into the realm where everyone in a senior stakeholder landscape is uh, is aligned. So this is more often than not um, more likely to happen in the corporate space where there are large organizations, there are more politics, uh, more turf wars, silos, departments and so forth. However, I have also seen this happen in uh, small organizations that were a few hundred people in size where there was uh, one particular key stakeholder or a senior um, stakeholder who was not uh, playing ball, who was not playing game, who had their own agenda and were following it. So the first thing that I'd like to put out there is um, this individual is a person too. They will have um, their own stuff going on. They um, ought to be met by us with unconditional positive regard. So if you are experiencing any sort of um, animosity within yourself towards them, any type of uh, negative emotion um, towards them, um, lean into that, learn from it, um, but ultimately let it go. It is not going to serve you well. We need to approach this um, uh, on a human-to-human -human level, but not on an adversarial level. These are not adversaries, these are colleagues. Uh, so we need to work out how to evolve our relationship with said colleague in order to come out the other side in a better way. One of the themes that you probably recognize that I keep uh, bringing up is around co-creation. Whenever we are seeing that there is a chasm, that there is a silo, that there is an issue between what we are doing and what others are doing, um, there is a chasm and we can only overcome that chasm when we are co-creating something new together. It will not work when we continue to try to do just our thing and they continue to try to do just their thing. Uh, we need to come together, work out what we want to build together, leveraging some of what ours comes um, up with, some of what their side comes up with. And only when we are doing this co-creation, this co-collaboration, um, then we have actually achieved collaboration. Before that, it is not so much the case. Um, so I mentioned I wanted to share with you a few supporting models uh, that will help us in the navigation of this. And um, the first one that I'm covering here is, um, of course, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
it is a useful reminder for us to think about what might be going on for this person. So we, uh, in the first instance, we are taking a step back from um, the the conflict or the friction or the chasm or whatever the thing is in between. And we want to focus on the other person and get curious about them and uh, learn about them. So I, um, I'm going to start drawing up a few things here. I'll just reorientate my, uh, my elements here. And we're going to go to the iPad cam. Very good. The first model that I think is very helpful for us is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So roughly speaking, you know, we have this um, represented as a pyramid. And at the very bottom of this pyramid, we have physiology. And um, when we're considering physiology, we think about the basic livelihoods, um, um, food, water, shelter, um, all the very basics that we need to have in place so that we can operate at, uh, well, that we, we can live and we can survive. Um, it's worth for us to bear in mind that that has an impact on how people uh, behave, how they interact with other people. Uh, it's not so much for us to give advice to the person and say, hey, I, don't, I see you don't drink any water. Um, maybe that would help you think clearly how you should do what we are doing rather than what you're doing. Uh, that would be an adversarial approach that I would not recommend. Uh, rather, it's for us to become more empathetic about how a person could, um, could act and interact with others. For example, when we're hungry, Many people aren't as accommodating, polite and friendly as they might be when they are well sated. Uh, if people don't drink enough water, then um, it's harder to concentrate. We, um, we're not quite as smart, not quite as, uh, as fluent in our demeanor, etc., etc. Right. So these things are worth bearing in mind uh, as a general consideration. It gets much more interesting when we come to the... Um, the next level up so this is where we are looking at the safety of the person safety nowadays has of course a very very different um meaning compared to uh, just hundreds of years ago. We are not so concerned about our life anymore in many parts of the world, luckily. Um, depending on where people live, of course, the, the situation is uh, different. But in Western society, we can generally assume that our life is not at uh, risk on a day-by-day -day basis. However, it is important to bear in mind that safety can present itself in different or the safety need can present itself in different needs nowadays one that is of particular importance is um, our ability to um, afford our livelihood and that is usually created that uh, affordability is created by the job that we hold so job safety is a key influence here that is always worth bearing in mind when we are thinking about the safety of the person so um, when we're looking at safety in Maslow's hierarchy of needs then um, I'm thinking um, primarily in terms of uh, safety the next level up that we have in Maslow's hierarchy of needs is uh, love and belonging. I, in the business world, I think about uh, belonging more than, um, than love. Love only in the sense that, generally speaking, we want to be good in our um, exchange with other people, um, work with positive intent, be, uh, be kind. Um, but belonging, I think, is a, is a quite interesting influence here. So if you think about how this can present in the business world, in the scenario that we've got at hand, right? There's this uh, key stakeholder who is not um, jamming with us. And we need to work out how to overcome the, um, the chasm with them. And there are quite a few people who are aligned. And then there's this person who is not aligned. So um, that creates this sense of uh, us versus them. But it's more pronounced because it's one person versus many. So they will be in a defensive stance or it's likely for them to be in a defensive stance. Another one is if they, um, if they are part of a peer group, say a leadership team or management team, and they are the odd one uh, out, once again, they will not feel um, as part of that group and it will be difficult. Um, so this is another 
another area that I always like to bring up um, because it has a strong influence on uh, the issue at hand that we're exploring. The next level up from Maslow's hierarchy of needs is esteem, aka self-worth. This is an important one because it, it comes back to the sense of identity of the person that we are thinking of here. And in, man, in many cases, it can be that their self-esteem is tied very closely with their uh, title or their role. And because of that, if they feel like their role or title is at risk, then once again, that puts them into the defensive position and um, can exacerbate any survival mode and for them to um, double down and do what uh, they're doing if they are in that mindset. Right, so esteem is another one in here. And then last but not least uh, is self-actualization, which I always um, struggle to fit into the top of the pyramid. It's kind of ironic that it is the um, longest of the needs and um, is at the top of the pyramid. So self-actualization, and apparently it's also difficult to write for me, actualization. Self-actualization is a wonderful thing, of course, but we can only start to really pursue self-actualization if the other needs have been met um, just enough, right? Um, we cannot really say that we need to have our physio physiology fully met, our safety need fully met, our belonging need fully met, our esteem uh, need fully met, our self-actualization need fully met. That's not really what we are um, considering. But we, those needs have to be met just enough so that we have enough um, mental capacity to pursue self-actualization, right? So um, the, I keep coming back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs because everyone at least has a rudimentary um, knowledge of it. So we can bring it up, refresh our memory and actually use it to appreciate where the other person is and what might be going on for them, right? In particular, it is um, these three here that often are a key influence, right? Uh, the esteem, belonging, and the safety. So bear those in mind and try and work out what's going on for the other person and um, get curious about what might be going on for them and what might um, influence them from those needs to behave in the way that they are uh, behaving, to think in the way that they are thinking. Okay. Now, um, the, this is one of the models that I always bring in because it is uh, super helpful to help us think about where other people are. And then another model is also quite useful in order to think about um, generally what's going on when we are considering um, organizational change and human change. And that is the EDGE model uh, uh, that we can use here. So once again, a brief reminder in order to think about what's going on so i've uh, i've drawn this up very basically before in order to um show and remind us of this we have the edge and on the left hand side is what we would consider the primary on the right hand side is what we consider the secondary so you can think of the primary as the present experience or the present state of the person or the system the human system which is you know the, the this um, constellation of all the people combined and the secondary would be possible futures uh, i really remind myself regularly that it's possible futures because um, how the future evolves is of course very much up to us. We have a strong influence over that. And then here in the middle, when people go across the edge, this is where we um, have edge behaviors coming up. So it, the closer people get to here in order to start over um, coming, coming over the edge, the more likely is that edge behaviors will appear. Edge behaviors can be all sorts of things. They can be positive, like excitement. They can be uh, uncomfortable, like um, nervousness. Although physiologically, the two are very difficult. So some people say that it's just a frame of mind that uh, differentiates nervousness from excitement. Something to think about. Um, when we think about the edge model, we can also then uh, consider 
what this looks like. So if we are part of an initiative in the organization that um, is going in one direction and uh, we have already go, gone over here and uh, this way of working, for example, uh, is what we have been adopting, then that actually is our new primary, right? So the, the moment we have fully integrated a secondary, it has become our new primary. It has become our present experience. And uh, so for us, this is the primary, but for another person, uh, they have a very different uh, primary, right? So they still have to make that shift over here. And perhaps um, that's not exactly what's right for this person. They necessarily, based on what they're doing, um, what we do is not necessarily what they need to do. But um, we can use this as a model to think about overall as a system, what is it that we need in order together to go from where we are to here um, together. So if we say that uh, in addition to this one primary, there is another primary from a uh, another person, what does a new future look like that we are co-creating? Okay, so we have a green primary for um, one person or one set of people and then a blue primary for another person or another set of people. So what does the future look like that we are co-creating together, a joint secondary for us where we're working together. Okay, so that is the second model that I'd like to bring in here for us to um, work up how we can overcome the chasm. Um, the this is the starting point essentially we want to increase our empathy and our understanding of what the other person is experiencing and what's important to them what are their goals what are they looking to achieve um, um, what explains their behavior what explains their way of thinking what can we learn about them how can we get really curious and um, uh, understand a lot more what is going on for them that will increase our chances of uh, showing up for a co-creation um, as an equal and as a human being frankly and that is essentially Essentially, what this is about, right? Um, multiple human beings looking for a joint way forward. Okay, so that's the uh, theoretical backing that helps us with the preparation. Now we need to work out how to actually do the thing. So there are multiple different approaches um, here, and I am including them because um, there is no one size fits all. Um, it will be often a combination of a couple of these things but the overall strategy is the same now um, what we are working up here is essentially also what i teach on um, one of my courses the systemic coaching for deep agile coaching course and is the conglomerate of many different models and approaches that i have um, accumulated in order to uh, work with these very challenging situations over the years and uh, they've uh, it's it served me well so i'm delighted i get to share this with you and i also wanted to acknowledge you as we're kind of halfway through here for really wanting to make this work with the other person it's not easy work that we're doing right um it's ultimately all comes back to human change um if you are a product leader and you have product on your mind all day long you may, may also consider that what you're doing is ultimately people work right ultimately it everything is about human change now let's work out what we do with this, right? So we have done the homework, we have learned and understood what is important to the other person, how they think, um, and we need to be aware of what their goals are and um, what their motives are, what their big why is and what drives them. Um, so with all of those things in mind, that will give us the input for overcoming the chasm together with them. The next thing that we then want to do is mapping our network when we map our network we are um, visualizing people relationships essentially we are um, we are visualizing people relationships so if here somewhere that's uh, uh that's me and we have um, a network of people that is all aligned i'm Getting a bit hypothetical here because I want um, f to ensure that you can apply this concept to your particular, uh, particular situation. And uh, there might be other groups of people in here as well. 
But ultimately speaking, you know, we are all moving in the same direction. We are all aligned in our thinking. So our overall bubble is moving in one direction. And then we have another part in the um, organization where there is one key stakeholder and they have some direct reports. Yeah, and they're part of the same organization, but they are going somewhere else. Yeah, um, so we want to find a way where we can work out how to come up with something where we can fold in this with that and figure out a way together that is more compatible. Excuse me. <coughs> we want to then work out what the relationships are. Okay, so this is the if the, if this is the visualization of the challenge at hand. Now we need to work out what it looks like in terms of our people network. So if this is us, and this is the other person, uh, we want to work out what our immediate network is and what their immediate network is. Um, who are the people that they are interacting with, and what are their relationships? And who are the people that uh, we're interacting with and what are our relationships? So let's say that, you know, this person, uh, they have a very fierce relationship with this person. Um, so it needs improvement. And so with this one, but here they have a really good relationship and here they have a really good relationship. And this person here, they have a neutral relationship, okay? So thickness um, means intensity and red means uh, um, relationship needs improvement. Green means there's a positive relationship and there is collaboration happening and this is a, we can do something with this relationship. It's, um, it's a positive relationship. And then gray means not really worth considering. They just... Um, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't do much for us. Okay. In our case, say um, we have a really good relationship with this person. We have a reasonably good relationship with that person. Okay, relationship with that person. Um, yeah, need some improvement uh, with that person. Haven't really spoken. Uh, haven't really invested in the relationship uh, with that person. And here and here. Good. Now, um, let's say that our relationship with this person is very strained and we cannot directly work with them right now because of how things are. All right. So we need to go indirect and we need to repair, uh, but repair with empathy and positive intent. We ultimately want to make this work and do what we can. There is recourse. Um, if things don't go well, but every relationship uh, is usually, well, it's often easier um, to work with what you have and repair and improve than it is to do a complete, um, uh, to do an extreme version where ultimately another person really loses their, uh, their job. So before it gets to that, especially during difficult times right now, we really want to do what we can in order to help the other person um, work, uh, work out what's work out the situation so that it can move forward together. Good. So we cannot directly um, engage with them. So we need to go indirect. And then we work out what the um, uh, the relationships are. And let's say also there, um, to make it a little bit uh, easier, there is a person that we know, uh, that we mutually know, and uh, we could get on well with them, but they, they don't go on well with them directly. So we don't have to, we cannot go just one degree of separation. We have to go two degrees of separation. Right. Uh, so, and then we simply work out what the, the quality of those relationships is. And let's just um, come up with some, for instance, here. Uh, let's say that uh, they don't get along. Yeah. 
they get along. They get along. They get along. They don't get along, and so on and so forth. Right. So we then simply look at uh, where do we have a um, relationship chain <laughs> that uh, so we're, we're picking basically uh, a very extreme case here right because even the one person that we know mutually there is no uh, continuous thread of positive relationship because here it works but here it doesn't okay so we cannot go all the way through i'm just going to use orange i don't have to change colors as i go through so we then go through our relationship network and we say okay so this works but we can only go so far to here uh this works this works but we don't go directly there because that doesn't work out this works this works this works okay fantastic so this relationship pair is one that we can use uh direct we cannot go here we uh, we already worked this one right so this works but this doesn't work so we cannot use that path this doesn't work uh, this doesn't work this works this works but we cannot use that path because it's not a continuous one uh, we could use that one perhaps yeah but um, not this one not this uh, and perhaps this one so our first uh, strategy would be to um, establish a communication channel to the other person whom we want to um, build the rebuild the bridge with through this person here and that person there okay so this is um, this is a longer game right ideally we would have um, prevented the situation from escalating to this point ideally in uh, by starting off with a person with the uh, when we get introduced to that person right and we move from a neutral relationship here over to a positive one but we are assuming that that for some reason or another has not worked and our relationship directly here uh, is too frail even to uh, um, mend it if it's a little bit strained we can do go directly right and say hey i'm sorry things are not really good right now um, i'd like to change that and i um, want to work out how we can move forward together um, i have done some thinking and i could imagine some things and uh, you can either just share with me what's going on for you what's important for you uh, what you would like for us to do differently how we can co-create something better together um, or if right now you just want to listen what I've been thinking as a sign of um, my willingness to invest in the reinvigoration of our relationship, here's what I came up with. And uh, if any of them is wrong, I'm sorry. They're simply mm, my assumptions based on um, what I got to learn about you. But I, um, you know, if I would like to talk more so that I can learn more about you, right? So this is a um, a humble approach of resetting the relationship. We are assuming that we've tried that already and it hasn't worked, okay? But if you haven't tried that yet and your relationship is not overly strained, that would be my first um, suggestion to do that for um, uh, going going forward. Okay, so. Um, we are assuming though that for some reason or, or another this relationship is so bad that we cannot go direct okay and in this scenario we're also assuming that uh, there is no connection that only has one degree of separation with one person in the middle such as this one here we're assuming basically that we cannot use that so everything is two degrees apart so we need to work with a relationship um, channel that goes through two other people in order to um, engage with the one person who is um, not in alignment with our work right so this is uh, this is that person here now we need to work out what we can do there so this is um, where we um, do the same thing but it will take a lot longer and um, uh, so on and so forth so uh, some general tips if um, so far you have tried or are considering trying to um, have a workshop with uh, this person and uh, this person and with you know all of these people here and then some other people from your side and so on and so forth imagine what um, that feels like even on a subconscious level right there are 10 of us and there are three of them and we're trying to work out how to do this 
may not be the best way forward. Uh, it might be better if you know if the key um, the the key stakeholder is just one person and they are basically the epicenter of uh, the lack of alignment. Right? It's really down to what that one person and what uh, they are influencing and uh, telling these people here. Then it might be better to um, do something that is a lot um, smaller scale. So, you know, one-to-one -one at first, right? Um, getting these people to talk together and um, uh, preparing. So we first say, um, hey, you know, um, I think, you know, this person here, first of all, could you make an introduction so that perhaps we could uh, talk together because I don't know them. And um, this would be one way where this person can help us. So is there a way for us to get closer to this person? Because we get an introduction to this person. That would be one option. Okay. So let's say that um, that for one reason or another work, just to keep it as difficult as possible for um, this overall approach. Um, so that you hopefully can see that, you know, th there are still ways, even when it's really, really difficult. And um, I'm sharing something from a very tricky case um, that I cannot reveal too much about. But um, this is pretty much what I had to deal with uh, once where I couldn't get closer to the other person. And um, there was no way to get that uh, introduction. And we had zero relationship and it would not have, uh, have uh, worked anyway. So let's get back to this one here. So for some reason or another, a direct relationship is out of the question just to keep this as tricky as possible. Okay. So that doesn't work, right? But we still need to work then with this person here and we say, hey, all right, um, ultimately, we all want to make progress here and we're seeing that this person is not really helping us and they're influencing these people. So that results in us going here and in them going here. And we need to work out how we can create something where uh, we are collaborating and co-creating something new together, right? So this is basically the reiteration of the why we are addressing this person here. So I would like to get your help to um, learn more about um, how we can collaborate with this person here, how we can help them get more of what they want just in a different way, perhaps, right? So in order to do that, um, we know that you're good friends with this person here. And um, ultimately, we're preparing, uh, we are enlisting the support of this person and we're asking them to enlist the support of this person and we're, uh, in order to um, talk to this person here and um, create the new thing together. Right? So this, once we have established this communication channel, this is where we then come back to everything that we prepared before um, from our appreciation here, right? So we want to understand what's going on for them. Uh, first of all, on a very personal uh, level, we want to um, work out how they are seeing uh, their present, how they are seeing a possible future. We want to understand from them how they are seeing their approach in comparison to ours. And we uh, want to work out together what we see as edge behaviors of the organization of this being a chasm here, right? What is the cost of continuing in the way that we're doing? What is the benefit of working out something together? And uh, this is where essentially the coaching skills are coming in. Um, if, if you have them here, but you can do this without um, professional coaching training also. And uh, simply become more question orientated and uh, get curious, ask people with uh, open ended non leading questions or so questions that cannot be answered with yes or no questions that, um, um, you know, help us to create something together, uh, rather than forcing our way on the, uh, the other side, right? So you are um, enlisting the support of this person um, in a coaching style, and you can prep them and uh, uh, ask them to um, engage with this person here in order to ultimately engage with this person here. Our goal is that this person moves from um, the mode that they're in, which 
could be construed as adversarial, defensive, whatever it might be, and go more into a creative mode, because once they are in a creative mode, they are more open to listening, and we can start to shape something together. So once we have established a communication channel, we want to go back to the ultimate principle of overcoming a chasm. And that is something that is shared together. Okay, I'm going to write this up in big, big let, uh, letters. <laughs> Let's make that big. Okay, co-create shared goals. Yeah. In our exploration, we will have identified some things that are important to them. Oops. What's important to them? What do they think they stand for? Right? What have we learned about uh, them? What's their identity? What's their, um, their esteem and all of those things, right? So uh, we need to be mindful of everything that is going on for the other person and um, help them satisfy the needs and um, co-create shared goals, right? This is the magic sauce of uh, these things. In order to get people to be open to creating shared goals, though, this is where all the prep work comes in that we have talked about, right? Um, if they don't want to talk to us, <laughs> uh, we need to work out how we can talk to them through other people, um, but ultimately work out what is at stake for them, which needs of theirs aren't met and which um, things that they have are at risk in their perception. And we need to work with them to help them alleviate those fears and worries. Okay, so this is the overarching approach and um, the tips that I have folded in here also. Um, if you do have any questions about um, this approach or anything that I covered in here, please make sure to leave a comment below and um, I will uh, answer all of them. There are, you can have uh, questions, of course, that can be um, anonymized <laughs> in order to address some more specific scenarios of this. And um, uh, this is the overarching approach that I have used uh, multiple times. And I've tried to show you the, the, the most difficult constellation possible so that you can see even in the most difficult situation possible, there is a way, way forward. It is possible. And um, uh, if that also fails and does not work and this other person does not go there, there are a few more options. Okay. So let's uh, go to the um, other few more options. Okay. Um, so let's say that this person is... Um, you know, uh, this could be any kind of type of constellation. This could be their direct reports, but it also could be that, you know, th these relationships are part of the leadership team. That is also um, possible. And um, if the collaborative um, co-creation of shared goals does not work, which um, usually it does, then it is always a possibility that uh, this person ultimately is not a fit for the possible future of the organization. This is something that we just need to acknowledge. That can happen, of course. And um, while we can want to do our best in order to retain good people, and um, perhaps if the older role, the traditional role that they've been doing has been made redundant, um, there can be another role where, uh, based on their skills, they can add real value in the organization, okay? So while uh, we don't necessarily want to guarantee role security, we can improve and secure the job security overall, right? Having said that, if um, the, um, this particular person really does not want to do anything in order to get with the program, essentially, then they are not a fit for the vision of the organization. 
Okay, so uh, this is a conversation that um, um, somebody will definitely be in a position to have, even if it's not us. And, uh, but the idea is that uh, uh, we say, okay, so you know, we, we've really tried everything that we can uh, to help for your needs to be met, for you to get the support that you wanted. Uh, we uh, looked at how we can do things together, how we can co-create a shared uh, future together, and you didn't want any of it. Okay, so um, what way do you propose that we go forward? And then silence, right? Uh, this is another way to solicit um, plus possible ways uh, forward. Uh, if that also fails, the ultimate <laughs> move is to say, okay, so we've tried to close the gap here to come up with something that we can create together to fold you in. Um, however, you are not prepared to move up here. Uh, we have made that move already. This is our new primary, but uh, we wanted to create something new together with you and you did not want that. It seems that you are not up for it. We are m continuing to evolve in this general direction. If you want to be a part of this, please be a part of this. If you uh, want to support us and we support you on the way, then you need to support this direction. If you do not support this direction, then you will find that um, there is a mismatch between what you stand for and we, uh, what we move to as an organization. Um, underlying the edge model for change are three aptitudes towards change that people generally have. The first one are the so-called leapers. They are the ones who are super excited about everything new and they will be the first ones to go across the edge and their edge behaviors will usually be curiosity and excitement. And uh, so the leapers, they go over here. Leapers are super quick, Zip. right here. Then we have the majority of the people that would be um, uh, uh, the category that goes over here more you know at a, at a steady pace not quite as excited as the leapers in a little bit more more information but usually they come uh, over here we'll come back to those in a minute the um, third categorization of uh, people in terms of aptitude to change is uh, also a minority is the juxtaposed minority compared to the leapers and they are the tradition holders slowly going up here And some of them may never make it to the other side and they peel off and leave because the new future is not really for them. Okay. Then the larger middle section that I mentioned, oh, I gotta write down the name. So those are the tradition holders. Okay. The middle section Those are the so-called bridge builders. Okay. So um, you might recognize from some organizational uh, programs that um, you've identified some people who aren't uh, really up for it. And then uh, some people think, hey, you know, these people are super excited. You know, everything about the new world, they should talk to these people. How did that work? Usually that is too much of a mismatch between uh, between the vibe. Um, these tradition holders, you know, they uh, they help us remember the good things about how we're doing things right now. The leapers help us to remain curious about new options. Um, if the company was full of leapers, we would uh, have you know shiny ball syndrome and pursue lots of different dog uh, things at the same time. No consistency, no progress. If uh, we only had tradition holders, we wouldn't um, uh, invent any new things. We would continue to do the same things as we've uh, always done them. Right. Um, so either extreme on its own is not working as an organization. Um, there is wisdom in every voice. But what we can do is ask the leapers to um, engage more of the bridge builders and help them over the edge. And we can ask the bridge builders 
uh, to work more with the tradition holders, right? So these types of bridge builders here who are slowly making their way up, um, they can help to uh, pull along some of the tradition holders. But back to our special case, right? So we identified that uh, we've tried everything. Uh, closing this gap doesn't work. Co-creating a new uh, future together doesn't work. And um, now we're in a position where we tell the person who was here. Oh, where is he? Where is he or she? This person. You're here. Uh, we're all along here. We wanted to move together and go here. You're not up for it. We are going there. We are already here to some extent, but we wanted to you know, get even better together with you. You're not coming along, so you can make a choice. You can either get with the program yeah, and join us over here, or you can realize that um, what, how, what you're doing, how you're doing it, what you stand for is not what this organization now needs. And you might be of um, more uh, service elsewhere. This is the last resort, the ultimate. Equally is possible, uh, but I would say doing everything that we've can that we've covered beforehand is um, everything that we can really do. And then there's always the last resort, right? Okay. So that concludes everything that I wanted to share on uh, this. As I mentioned, if you do have any questions about um, anything that we've covered, any particular application issues, then um, post them below. Um, this is not easy, uh, this type of work. Occur we're going to have to do a lot of self-management. Uh, I acknowledge you for that. I know it's not, uh, not an easy thing to do. I've been through it myself, but I know that you can do it. Um, I, I was very nervous about the situations beforehand. Um, I was able to do it. I worked myself um, through the emotional experience. I know you can do that too. This is really important work. Um, there, uh, but hopefully with the, this approach here, you can see that it's it, it's not um, uh, it, it is not um, a horrendous experience. Yeah, um, if you put yourself into a, a state of curiosity and empathy, and uh, wanting to co-create something together, then it is a it is a creative endeavor rather than a conflict endeavor. Okay, so uh, please bear this in mind. Once again, you're awesome for doing this work, and if you do have any questions please put them in a the comment below and I look forward to engaging with you in a month's time. And uh, if you want any sort of mid-month uh, support and haven't already signed up for the monthly or four-weekly um, Q&A, please do so. You should have a link in the section below here um, to sign up for those calls to make sure to check in as well there. And any requests for upcoming topics, please also let me know any way you want, by email or in the comments below, whichever way way you like. All right. So uh, this is George signing off. Thank you very much. All the best for the practice with your team and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.